In this video, we'll be taking a look at both ballistic missiles and anti-ballistic missile technology. In this case, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a traditional ballistic missile first. In this case, it's an SS-26 Stone. That's a 9K-720 Iskander missile. So in this case, our weapon, being a ballistic missile, is going to start by taking a ballistic trajectory. It's going to be punching through the thicker part of the atmosphere and picking up uh, quite a bit of energy in the process as it starts to climb up, 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 and up. Uh, in this case, on the other side of the world, uh, where they're using the radars to try to identify this incoming weapon, uh, they're going to be having a little bit of difficulty once it passes outside of the effective range. Notice our missile here has uh, gotten itself up fairly significantly high. We're about 88 kilometers at this point, pushing about Mach 4.5. It's going to go ahead and rotate and start making its way back through the atmosphere and picking up a tremendous amount of speed in the process. And you can see as it drops down, it's going to go ahead and arrive at its target and cause a significant amount of very, very difficult to intercept. The next type of ballistic missile we're going to take a look at is a little different. Uh, this is a very specialized weapon. It's the Avangard Hypersonic Glide Vehicle. Not only is it going to be traveling initially like a ballistic missile, but what it will actually do is it will re-enter the atmosphere and basically travel along the atmosphere using a little bit of lift in order to basically fly to the target at a lower altitude, making it a little bit more difficult to intercept. So in this case, we can see the weapon itself is uh, starting to climb up vertically pretty much right away. Same genetic limitations as the other missile. Our speeds are going to be a little bit higher on account of the fact it's going to have to travel a significantly longer range. Now what you see here is the actual, uh, this is the vehicle itself that the missile has launched. This is the actual Avangard, the uh, hypersonic glide vehicle. So it's basically going to punch itself out of the thick part of the atmosphere and then it's going to start arc downwards and make its way into back to the regular part of the atmosphere and fly as low as it can without of course creating so much drag that it's not able to safely achieve its targets. So we can see here it has gone down, it is traveling almost level like an airplane, still pretty high up, and once it gets a little bit closer to its target, it'll then finish up its strike by dropping almost vertically directly down on its target itself. You can see here as it kind of crosses the coast of Georgia, it's still doing about Mach 12, and you can see it's significantly lower as well. We're only about, uh, let's see, about 27,000 feet. Weapon, again, trying to stay low, but at the same time still having that staggering speed of 11 times the speed of sound. Weapon drops off, and then it's going to complete by pitching itself up, and then flying itself directly down onto the actual target region itself. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at things from a ballistic missile perspective, an anti-ballistic. You'll notice our traditional weapon here was able to be detected pretty much right away with a long-range discrimination radar. We, of course, also have a THAAD battery, which is trying to uh, work out the geometry to be able to engage this weapon. Since this weapon is traveling in a ballistic arc, it's actually relatively easy to track its performance across the sky and then be able to launch appropriate interceptors. Unfortunately, the weapon itself is traveling at an extremely high speed, which makes the engagement time very, very short. And should things be aimed properly, it actually makes it very, very challenging for certain types of weapons to engage it directly.